laners. There are six top laners, so uh, <laughs> you guys can guess yourself. Or you can go to lolesports.com and check the schedule. It's kind of spoiler already. Yeah, that's a kind of spoiler. But they are setting up right now. We have two pots on stage, so as the one game is being played, the second team or the uh, second set of players is setting up. And again, they can see the screen in-house. It's actually <laughs> super cool where they can... If somebody's brush camping, they will know. But to get more about the next set of players, who it actually is, let's toss it over to Dash and see which these top laners are. Ooh. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Game one went to Team Ice and X Peke, but now it's time for game two. So starting, battling on the blue side, the greatest North American top laner from Korea. He only needs the words top die, and that's all he's gonna need this time around. It's Impact! Y representando al equipo chino, Deadward Gaming, que no se engañe su tamaño, tenemos a Maus. All right, gentlemen, lock and load. Good luck. This matchup, stylistically, a man known for top die in the sense of doing yeah. it upon others. And <laughs> Mouse left alone on that top lane island. And had a, obviously, pretty rough group stage in the World Championship where things went downhill for him. And especially on like one of his like signature picks that I actually mm -hmm. thought if he was going to have a little bit of fun here, he's going to play like Aurelia. He's nine and... 9-1 all-time record on it. Only lost one game, INTC, at Worlds, where he got destroyed. I mean, things are looking up for him. There is no jungler to camp him. It Very is true. It's actually just 1v1. He is in full control of his own destiny. But he is playing against one of the best 1v1 players in North America. So that is obviously super, super tough for him. He also needs, like, redemption almost after... It's a bad item, 1v1. Well, maybe. Maybe you should try and rush it. Sadly, you never get one full item in the 1v1 map. It's just oh. Doran's Blades and maybe, like, a Cloth Armor. There is a cap on the Doran's Blades. Only two are be allowed uh, to be purchased. These guys rushed into game. You see what's happening. We threw away the overlay, guys. We're back to a more simple version. And Kenan is banned. What this guy surprise. This guy gets it, man. He, he plays some 1v1s. This guy bans. Yasuo is out of the table as well. Jason Varus. Jason, really good uh, champion in proximity, but wasn't really played or banned that much, I feel, in IWCA. I think a lot of the like, mechanically very gifted mid laners would love to play like a lot of Jays in a, in a matchup like this or in a mode like this. Kalista was something that kind of came out of nowhere in the IWCA 1v1s, especially introduced by Southeast Asia, who's obviously still here. I wonder if these guys are, are aware that they can uh, have a look -see on the screen, because it's, it's blind pick, but there's literally a giant monitor hanging yeah, right next to their face. There's nothing blind about this. There's nothing blind, unless you don't want to look to the side and you really want to be surprised. That's also like one of these like internal metas that will develop, is the bait and switches at the end. Especially champion-wise, if there's counters. Ezreal is a pretty generic pick. He's good. It would disappoint me to see Impact play six. Yeah, I mean, again, I kind of want to see two bruisers here and like a level two, level three all in against each other. So like Irelia coming in then. But we get an A to carry. It's Illusion. The MVP pick of last year's 1v1. Definitely not as strong now, though, compared to last year. Much, much weaker. The fact like... Oh, all of that is a bruiser. Yeah. Could be Snowball, Olaf, honestly. Has to be almost. Like, you need either Ghost or Snowball to close the gap against this Lucian because you're going to get pushed in. Yeah. And then once you have enough levels, you can then like kind of chase down the entire lane before he gets to his tower. So you need like a, a different summoner spell. Yeah, I'm just looking at the screen here. The, obviously, we're standing here, but these guys have about 10 seconds left to choose their summoners. It looks like the, the Lucian is going for heal and barrier. Honestly, you know, you don't need <laughs> offensive. You just need to survive the all-in, kite the Olaf and yeah. get the hell out of dodge, and hopefully you can turn it around. It is exhaust ignite on the side of impact. So that is literally what? one no, shot. No, he changed, he changed. He got, he got ghost. ghost. Ghost, okay. At the very end. Interesting enough, going Ghost over Snowball. I guess yeah. uh, it can be really difficult hitting the Snowball against Illusion, who can just dash out of it. So Ghost allows him at least to just chase like through the entire lane. But you're never going to remove that tower, because then the game is over. Obviously. Yeah, it's, it's more security if you fight in the river. Because also, if you proc the Snowball, uh, the second part of it, and Lucian dashes out right off, and you somehow miss your axe, oh, then you, yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely over. So that's definitely something you want to look for. But overall, this is a matchup where Mouse wants to push, but he has to tread very carefully. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to see like the 80 carries against the Bruises quite a bit in this tournament. And and every single time, it's like the same way it's going to get played out. The 80 carry will push and get CS advantage and try and win on 100 CS. And the Bruiser wants to try and all in after he has a few levels under his belt. Oh, wow. He's actually going Corruption Potion. Definitely. Is he insane or is he a genius? 
There's a fine line between courage and stupidity. Let's see where impact is at. He I guess he just wants to sustain. So yes. the problem in 1v1 is in poor matchups that require all in is that you get put in a deficit. Obviously now he can just put an axe in Miles' face, sidestep. The problem is that you can eat such a large CS deficit early that when you're all in, you're just an item down, like a component at least. Right, I mean, like a Doran's Blade or yeah. something like that. Sure, I, luckily you only need to farm like around the 500 gold to go back and get that one item. And in 1v1s like these, you never see a fully completed item. And getting to 100 CS as well, it takes quite a lot of time. Which yeah. means there is enough time to get like level 6, 7, 8 for someone like Olaf and then really go for the all-in. But already at level 3, his damage output should be equal to what Maus has. Yeah. The problem is he's against a barrier and he has a ghost which doesn't add any combat value. I definitely want to wait until maybe level 5. Or honestly do two all-ins, one where you pop the summoners, which we see very often. Mouse here, he got control early. Basically you want to queue through. Oh, impact is actually going in. Oh, he's going with the Axis level 1 spam! There's minions Get getting out. in plus exhaust. Oh, impact, he realized, okay, I got minions on me, I'm not winning this trade, he still has barrier. But honestly, he's about to get level 2 poked anyways, with Miles dashing in aggressively with a level advantage. So he kept the trade on level 1 versus level 1. He burned equal summoners. Honestly, I think it was a pretty smart from Impact, because now the Corruption Potion exactly. is ticking in as well. We'll have more sustain for himself. Miles obviously can try and get a little bit of HP back with just auto-attacking the minions. But the fact that there's still a barrier means that Impact really has to be careful if he tries to all in. There's a lot of minions as well. Yeah, we see the, the kind of practice here, what you want to do as well with AoE abilities. You want to last hit a minion or hit a minion at least for the push. You take the heal. There you go. And you always want to make sure that you hit the enemy champion as well there. Double dibs rather. While you push, you want to be poking here. Mouse does it well. He's got a CS advantage. It would be stupid for him to be bold because he can back and always get more items. Yeah, and now... You know, while the engage from Impact made sense and he could then sustain with Corruption Potion, Mouse had really good timing on, on the Relic obviously spawning and being right next to it, so he picked that one up, still had the defensive summon already. And now with Warlord's plot lost as well on an AD carry, when you drop low, it's a bit like when Olaf drops low, yeah, you get a little bit stronger in that sense because you can then sustain back up very, very easily. And now you get that double Dorans against yeah. just a Longsword. But that's what we are always going to see is an inherent kind of small gold advantage in this 80 carry versus Bruiser matchup early on because the 80 carry will get the push, which means you poke him on a tower. The Bruiser cannot sustain himself. In fact, right now he's taking away the Relic. That's good. But he is down an extra item in essence because it's a sword on each side, a sustain item, and then an additional Dorns on the side of Mouse. And Impact will have to wait for his summoners again. Yep. So Mouse knows there's a bit of time here where he can just keep like farming and pushing. See if he can poke Impact low as well, or at least get him down to like a 50%. So he really has to be careful when he tries to all in. So overall, Mouse is in a very good spot at the moment. Just can't really start sleeping and suddenly get caught by too many axes. Yeah, it is just the second Impact decides to pick up one of those axes and chain them together, that's when Mouse needs to realize he's in a lot of trouble. So watch him keep the maximum distance, hopefully for him. But Lucian is a pretty short-range AD carry that can get baited in by Noah. Luckily for Mouse, though, again, if he always like saves the dash, if he knows, okay, right now Impact can't engage yeah. with so many minions, you can dash aggressively. Otherwise, you save it. The first axe that flies at you, you dodge, dodge that one, mm -hmm. and then you can actually start kiting backwards and wait for either tower or more minions to be there. And we saw Mouse do exactly that at the end of the previous wave. Once it was done, he knew Impact couldn't fight back in a full wave of minions, so he just did an EQ combo with double tap on each end. Just a few seconds on exhaust now for Impact. He's landed a little bit of poke onto Mouse. Is down a level at the moment, but we'll catch up very, very soon. I think level 5 is the way to go for Impact, because otherwise he'll trail too far behind on CS. Level 6, Lucian gets culling, which is really good in short range. So we might see Impact go for another level all in the second hit. Level five. Going there he goes. Goes straight for him. Mouse is exhausted, actually. There's a relic behind him, but can he get to it? Is it enough? Oh, he's getting to the tower. Not enough. Not enough barrier. He's a tower. Is it enough? Is it enough? Oh! the breaking point, because imagine if there was a going while he was kiting backwards in that exchange. Impact with the genius timing, he knew. And Mouse, honestly, too close. Level 5, Olaf, yeah. this matchup, when you 20 CS up, you know he's gonna come for you. And he didn't get to dodge any of the axes. He took all the damage he possibly could have taken there. Impact made it harder for himself, especially around level 3, where he did have a few issues and lost that.